So Jared, what are you doing? I am uh, reliving a family tradition uh, that my dad, as far as I know, didn't necessarily start but passed down to me. And that is putting beer nuts in your Coke and having it as a snack. And it just so happens that we are in Atlanta at the home of Coca-Cola right outside the Coca-Cola World of Coca-Cola Museum Center, whatever it's called. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. So what does it taste like? Um, it tastes like, um, it tastes mostly like Coke, but with well, obviously crunchy peanuts. Uh, and um, there's this really cool like, you get that sweet coke flavor but then there's also this like salty flavor that comes across too because the peanuts are salty um, and it's a nice mixture inside your mouth as you're drinking the pop and, and uh, so it's kind of like a sweet and savory type of deal yeah exactly so the trick is I believe in Japan they call that the umami region umami region which is the savory gotcha so the trick is just like your Mentos videos on YouTube, the, uh, the Mentos make the thing fizz. Same thing with the beer nuts, so you have to take a swig or two of the pot first. To create room, because otherwise it'll fizz over the top. And then you pour them in there. This ain't easy to do, usually. And about how many do you put in there? How many ever you want. You just have to be careful that it doesn't fizz over the top because otherwise it's a huge waste of beer nuts. Oh yeah, you can see it fizzing right there. Then you give it a second to fizz. See more fizz in there. Is that salt? Do the peanuts stay floating or do they ever Yes, they drop? always float. Okay. They never, they don't really, uh, I mean they, they get softer as they, the longer they sit in there, but um, they don't generally sink. Get that reflection in the glasses. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just seeing that you have the uh, pop top on your hat. It's really oh, sweet. okay. I don't know if you noticed that or not. I didn't have enough hands, so. Okay, and ready? so, what's the the typical drink? Do you try to get like one nut per drink, or or what's the? Um, deal? again, that's personal preference. Um, Are you a two nut guy? <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I just take a swig, and uh, how many ever peanuts I get is how many ever peanuts I get. So. All right, let's ready see for it. This? Ooh, that was a good healthy swig. Yep. That one's for you, Dab. Good. Just like I always remembered it. So what's the first memory that you have of doing this? Like about how old? Um I wanna say eight, nine, ten, okay. something like that. Dad took me to um I just remember it being um like we went to the softball fields or something, baseball, like watched a, like a, you know, little town league baseball game. Um, and then saw, uh, maybe it was like 4th of July, because uh, the place we usually go had town league softball or baseball games going on, and then fireworks after. And then I just, mostly what I remember though is riding home in our old single cab pickup truck and, uh, my dad being like, ah, here, take this Coke, try these beer nuts, put them in there, try it out. That's the first memory I have. So when you say family tradition, do, do your sisters do it as well? Um, I think they've done it before. But is but it more like a father-son type of I deal? I think it's more of a father-son type of deal. Yeah. 
Good call back there. Usually what I try to do is pay attention to where the peanuts are. It's like you might be able to see them. Yep. Pull out the condensation there. Eventually when you get you start eating all the peanuts. What I try to do is make sure that I get a couple of peanuts with every swig at least. Will you add peanuts later if yes. you start to get low? Okay. Yes. So However, it's not like a one and done type of deal? No, it's not one and done. You can go back for seconds on the beer nuts. However, um, after a certain point, it just doesn't fizz as much yep. and it loses that sort of... Does It, it kind of loses that balance? That, you get too yeah. much salty then? And, yeah. Okay. The, the pops almost seems like it's flat yep. at that point. Almost. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening, but that's what it seems like. So would it be safe to say that when we met in college and started to do weird things like the Garvey experiments was that kind of almost like a weird like reminder of your dad and like reminder yeah. of basically what you had done as a kid yeah pretty much yeah. and and explain those Garvey experiments what did what did we do um, the big one that I remember is um, before each hockey game on a Friday night we would go to uh, we would first play NHL on PlayStation for an hour or two after class and then um, about 4, 4.30ish, whatever time we decided it was time to leave because we'd always get to the hockey game super early. We would go to Garvey Commons, which is where they serve food on campus, at St. Cloud State University, whoop, whoop. name drop, um, and Go Huskies, woo! We would go get our food, sit down, and then Tony would go and grab a glass, which was what, a 12 ounce glass, you would say? Yep. Grab a 12 ounce glass and would go to the ice cream station and just proceed to fill the 12 ounce glass with butterscotch. And then uh, at the end of the, the ice cream station, there was the toppings, and then he would go and put the uh, sprinkles, get a whole bunch of sprinkles and put it in there and then stir it up a little bit and then come sit back down and then uh, he would proceed to chug as fast as he could the butterscotch and sprinkles concoction. I don't know where that came from. We'll probably interview that here in a, in a little bit and find out where that actually came from. It came from nowhere other than stupidity. Okay. And the love of sprinkles and butterscotch apparently. Yeah. Um, and that would signify the end of our dinner and uh, the beginning of Tony's gut rut for the night. And then we would go down to the National Hockey Center, AKA the Herb Brooks Center now, and uh, watch the Huskies play. The other one that I remember was actually Coke involved where we would take like a regular Coke or a Diet Coke and then put a bunch of salt in them. Do you remember that? And then it would just like overflow really quickly. And we were the we did the Mentos experiment, pre Mentos experiment yep. with Coke and salt. Yeah. And then we, I think we tried other things other than salt. And some did, worked, some and didn't. We did. There was one time that we did all the flavors of pop and had a, a rainbow of colors, and then did it and then overflowed. No. Yep. I don't know that we ever got in trouble for that, but we probably should have. Yeah. Well, at least uh, at the National Hockey Center, we. We had a rule basically made after us, and that was that That's was also true. part of the tradition. I think That's sometimes true. only one of us would be playing hockey, the PlayStation hockey, or even at Garvey, we would take time we to would, rip. We would, uh, we was it our second to last year? Yeah, junior year there. Um, we we had originally started a tradition of bringing fun signs to games, one of them being uh, uh, I Love Lamp after Anchorman, uh, the weatherman in Anchorman played by Steve Carell. Uh, I was a meteorology major so that made it super funny and coincidental and in the movie he happens to say just out of the blue I Love Lamp and we adapted that to our hockey signage and uh, from there, the signs developed to um, a light switch with the on, and then it said fence after it, and salt in the wound, a picture of a salt shaker, and then wound. Um, we heart free SH. 
uh, IG, asterisk T. We want free shit. Yep. Um, oh, so many good signs. Bow down to Bobby was a good one because Bobby Gepfert was our goalie for a season or two, two seasons. Um, a lot of good signs that had a lot of great memories. And then our second to last year, we decided for the rival hockey game, rival. Every every uh, school that's in Minnesota that's not the U of M that played in the WCHA at the time was a rival of the Gophers. Uh, we would make a uh, signs and bring them to that game and then our second to last year we would, went to the game and decided we we're gonna make confetti so we proceeded to uh, raid the campus newspaper stands uh, the newspaper was free to us uh, within I think the first time we did it uh, we got all of the newspapers from our dorm and um, even Garvey and Garvey and then I think one other place um, and had, I think we had one grocery bag full of confetti that time. And I believe that is the one, uh, no it's not, skip that part. Uh, we, we took it to the game and proceeded to throw all the confetti on the first goal and uh, make a great game even better with a little atmosphere and confetti. Um, it was so popular that the following season, we, we discontinued it for that season, left, left that be the highlight of the season, and then <clears throat> the following season, we, um, we decided to do it again for the back-to-back -back versions of the game, um, and this time we raided like five or six uh, newspaper stands, and for two or three weeks, we tore confetti. We ended up with how many bags? A bunch of bags and we put them in like smaller... We didn't fill grocery bags this time, but um, we decided to ration them out over, uh, I think it was like seven or eight grocery bags and we handed yeah, them out I to think a couple plastic of different bags people. Or whatever, yeah. uh, we handed them out to a couple different people on different sides of the student sections on each side of the ice. And um, they were still, I mean, for a grocery bags a lot, yep. right, in general. Um, and we had maybe a third of that per grocery bag. So a third of a grocery bag full for each one of those. Um, and had the lower student section, the upper student section, and the far student section all with grocery bags full of confetti. And on the first goal, we decided that that was the time we were gonna unleash all of them at one time except for one or two. I think we both kept on one or two. And um, basically from that point, it was complete mayhem. Um, there's a video out there shot by one of our friends from school uh, when he was in the upper section watching us throw all the confetti. Um, it took a long time. It made a gigantic mess. And at the end of it, uh, basically by the time that we had graduated at the end of that year, uh, there was now a rule going forward that said uh, no signs, no confetti, all that kind of stuff. You're welcome, St. Cloud. You're welcome. I don't know if that's still the case, uh, but the last couple times that we've gone, it doesn't seem like there's been anything, so maybe they have changed, maybe they haven't, but you're welcome. Yeah.